Now, Ben Davison has been very coy about Tyson Fury ever since he started training Anthony Joshua. He doesn't like to talk about him too much. When he does, it's a few little words here or there. Now, in this instance, he was asked about the upcoming fight between Usyk and Fury. And he said, well, it's a very interesting fight. I'm paraphrasing here. He said, it's interesting. And if Tyson Fury doesn't impose his size in the right way, or if he doesn't use the right tactics, it's going to be difficult for him to impose his size. That's basically the gist of what he said. If he doesn't approach the fight in a particular fashion. He didn't elaborate on what he meant by that, at least not in the clip I saw. And as somebody who obviously knows Tyson Fury very well, not just as a person, but as a trainer, I'd be fascinated to know what Ben Davison did mean by that. How does he think Tyson Fury should approach the fight? Which approach would allow him to impose his size? Front foot, back foot, a mixture of the two? Southpaw, orthodox? He also spoke about a common misconception people have about Alexander Usyk. He says a lot of people think of Usyk as a runner, a guy who moves around the ring a lot, but actually Usyk is very aggressive in the ring. He's very front foot. And that's actually true for a lot of Usyk's fights. But what I will say is Usyk is the type of fighter who takes what you give him. So if you give Usyk space and you're not really being very aggressive, then he'll come forward and be aggressive on you. But if you come charging at him, he won't typically meet you head on. He'll start moving around the ring. So he takes what you give him. And I've seen some people out there speak about Alexander Usyk like he is a lesser version of Vasyl Lomachenko. Now, if you're talking about coordination, balance, and all-round dexterity, then yes, of course he's a lesser version of Vasyl Lomachenko because Lomachenko is much, much smaller. And generally, smaller fighters, especially when you're talking about that type of size difference, are faster, better coordinated than big guys like Usyk, who's, you know, 220 pounds, six foot three. But I actually think Alexander Usyk is more versatile than Vasyl Lomachenko. Lomachenko, over the years, has shown himself to be a guy who really doesn't like fighting on the back foot. He likes to come forward. He likes to swarm all over you, get angles on you, step to the side, be very busy. But when he's kept on the outside or when he's pushed back, he actually looks very uncomfortable. We saw that early on in his career when he fought Orlando Salido. We saw that later on in his career when he fought Teofimo Lopez. Whereas with Alexander Usyk, he seems more comfortable on the back foot to me than Vasyl Lomachenko. I mean, go watch Alexander Usyk when he fought Krzysztof Klawatski. That was his first world title fight, WBO at Cruiserweight. He was moving around the ring the whole fight like Muhammad Ali in there, literally. Very mobile, constantly on his bike, sticking and moving, very, very comfortable on the back foot. And there's been other performances where he's done that too. There's also, of course, many performances where Usyk is on the front foot and he's typically on the front foot, just as Ben Davison said. He likes to press the action. We saw that in certainly the first Anthony Joshua fight from the very first round. AJ gave him enough space to come forward, so he came forward and he started lighting AJ up. And so I've always thought that if Fury wants to box, and I think he will box in the early rounds, I don't think he'll just come straight out and jump on Usyk. Whether or not that's a mistake remains to be seen, but I've always thought that if Fury's going to box Usyk in the early rounds at long range, he might try and use Usyk's aggression against him by walking him on to the right uppercut, which is one of Fury's favorite counter punches. He's more effective with the right uppercut than he is with the straight right hand generally as a counter. But with Usyk seemingly being vulnerable to the body, you could see Fury angling that uppercut towards his body rather than his chin, or at least his chest, trying to catch Usyk on the way in. Now, if that don't work, perhaps Fury switches things up. You know, if Usyk has got his moves timed and he's starting to touch Fury with his right jab and outmaneuver him with the footwork. Maybe Fury switches it up, then gets aggressive and tries to do what he did to Steve Cunningham. But yeah, it's a fascinating fight tactically and uh, I can't wait to see it. But yeah, I'd like to see more or hear more from Ben Davison about this fight, being an ex-member of Fury's camp, right? His trainer at the time. Interestingly, he hasn't outright picked Tyson Fury to win. I don't know what to make of that. I really don't know what to make of that. Is he trying to get AJ's trust by not coming across as too pro Fury, but at the same time, you know, not wanting to uh, upset Tyson Fury either by picking against him? And remember, Mick Hennessy, Fury's former promoter, is actually picking Usyk to win. He said so in an indirect way in an interview a few weeks ago. You know, he was asked who he thinks comes out on top between 
the top four, top five heavyweights. And he said Alexander Usyk. Now, maybe that's Mick Hennessy being bitter because of the way things ended up between him and Tyson Fury. Mick Hennessy was very hurt by that whole situation. Or maybe Mick Hennessy knows things. Well, he definitely knows things that the rest of us don't know, but significant things about how Tyson Fury deals with small mobile heavyweights. We saw the Steve Cunningham fight, but we haven't seen the hundreds and hundreds of rounds of sparring that Tyson Fury has done over the years, which Mick Hennessy has. And remember, Mick Hennessy saw a prime Tyson Fury behind the scenes sparring. The version of Tyson Fury that exists today is not a prime Fury. <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination. Neither do we have a prime Usyk, to be fair. It's a matter of which guy is closer to their prime, because neither of them are in it. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you make of Ben Davison's comments?